Welcome back. Today we have a K7400. This is the second of four chassis that are being repaired for the same person. Uh, there were two 7000s and two 7400s. The video prior to this one was the first 7000. And to kind of break it up a bit, we'll do one of the uh, 7400s here. So I just, there's nothing on the box that I see that indicates the 7400. So I just, I did kind of peek in here to verify and it has the tag there that says 7400. So that's as far as I went. I didn't take it open and, or take it out and open it up and look at it. So I like to always show that on camera <clears throat> so I can discover along with you guys. So let's open it up and take a look. Hey, they sent uh, two cap kits. All right. Awesome. Thank you for that. Uh, okay, no blue. Picture washed out caps. Well, picture washed out is probably either uh, adjustments on the neck board for the color pots or an issue with that a picture tube that's being used with this. Uh, but no blue is almost guaranteed to be something with the neck board. Um, neck transistor or bad traces or uh, U500 or something. We'll figure it out. But no blue and picture washed out, and I guess it needs caps. So I'll set that aside. I like that the neck board was uh, protected on its own. Hey, and we have a late model 7400 with the uh, newer, better heat sinks. And we've got resistors here smashed over. So we'll have to fix that. Okay, that seems much better. Okay, um, let's just go ahead and disconnect this. Okay. Well, initial uh, indications here are that it's not too bad. Yeah, don't see anything wrong. Do we have any broken pots? No, these are pretty robust. They don't get broken like the white ones on the other models. Uh, neck board seems okay. Let's go ahead and take <coughs> this back panel off and I'll put it back on, obviously, when we're done. So no worries there. And... I don't see any issues with the solder joints on the transistors here. If I move these around, no, that's secure, that's secure, that's secure. Hmm. Yeah, these newer heat sinks with the little arms that come off the side, well, usually they keep it from, uh, yeah, they, they're much better and they usually prevent the normal issues we see here with lifted pads and broken pads. They prevent that from happening for the most part. But just on initial inspection here, I don't see anything really wrong with the neck board that would cause no blue. This seems intact, but we'll check the transistors later. For now, let's get the rest of this unboxed and see how the main chassis looks. Anything left over in the box? Uh, we've got some of these here. I'm not quite sure what these are for. Um, hmm. These look like parts of a ring assembly from the, the tube, but I don't think it's... We'll hang on to them, but I don't think they're parts... I don't think those go to the chassis here. I think they're part of the... Well, now this is different. What does this say? No red, no blue. Hmm. Well, it's not very likely that we have two missing colors, especially with a neck board that looks like this in this good a condition. And it's a much newer model of 7400, or much newer version, I should say. It's J. I think this is the uh, latest. There's a, I've seen H, I've seen I, I've seen J. Maybe K, but I think J is the latest revision, if not K. So it's a very late model, but I don't see anything 
at all in any way, shape, or form that would tell me and leap out at me that we've got multiple missing colors. So that's very odd that we have something here that says no red and no blue. But let's wipe these back and forth here, like I always do. And we'll set the drive pots here to center. And then we'll set the cutoff pots here, bias pots I should say, to roughly, let's see, roughly 30%, roughly there. <clears throat> Like I've said before, these these series of chassis really don't like the bias pots to be turned up uh, any more than about 30%, but I will say that the red and the, no, the green, no, blue. The blue and the green pots were all the way down. <clears throat> so that may contribute to some of this, I don't know, but these these two pots were uh, no, uh, blue and green. These two pots were completely all the way totally down. So this, and then red was basically at like maybe 10%. So, if, I mean, for all intents and purposes, all three of the bias pots were basically all the way down. I don't know if that might be the issue. I mean, hopefully it is. There's nothing else wrong, but these were all turned down. So we'll see. Uh, there's no outward signs of anything wrong. So we'll see how accurate this turns out to be once we get all of our testing done and, and uh, turned on. I'm not gonna do a cap kit before we turn it on. We'll go through and inspect everything. So obviously it does, it does power on. So I'm not gonna worry about testing the power circuit or the power components or the light bulb test or uh, really checking HOTs and voltage regulator. And I'm not gonna really worry about doing testing for this when it comes to power because we know it turns on. So I'm not gonna really be too worried about that. And we're just going to check oh, check it over, make sure there's no obvious signs of, oh, there's a cold solder joint, there's our problem kind of thing. And assuming that that's all okay, we're going we're to go ahead and just turn it on and test it. Uh, it could be an R811 issue, so we'll test R811. Let's go ahead and just disconnect our remote board here. Are any remote board pots broken? Um, nope, they all look, well, brightness is a bit pushed over, but they look okay. Um, let's get this off of there. Okay, now I think we're ready to inspect, uh, 703. Q703 seems okay, it's not, I'm moving it around, the pads aren't lifted and broken. I always inspect that because the ones with the heat sink on here, will cause this to get bent over and broken. You'll have broken legs and cause it to be dead, or you'll have lifted pads on the transistor. So this all seems okay. Looking at the back side, let's do a quick examination. We got a lot of a lot of solder joints that barely have any solder on it at all. But that's part of the degauss circuit, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, we've got solder joints on the CGA connector that are just about broken. Not quite cracked, but extremely common to have these over here be basically devoid of solder and are right on the edge of, right on the cusp of cracking. So we're gonna have to reflow those, but that'll be done later because they're not cracked at the moment. I don't see any crack at the moment, so that should be fine for testing. But it is something you always, you always wanna check. Well, so far, I don't see anything that leaps out at me that would give me indications of having color problems. So, yeah, I think what we'll do is let's go ahead and just test it, see what we get. There's no need to go through and test all of our components because we know it turns on. So we'll save that kind of stuff for some that turn on. I do see the, con the subcontrast pot is about 95% capacity. Here's the sub the K7400 and K7500 have this subcontrast pot and it was it was sitting right there. So about uh, 90%. So yeah, roughly 85 90%. So we're going to wipe this back and forth and set it to center position. Now, tradi traditionally, caps will have no effect on color. If you're missing a color 
or all of one color or color bleed and things like that. For the most part, caps don't control color issues. So, you know, they'll, they'll cause power problems or screen size problems or position problems or collapse problems. But for the most part, uh, color issues, no, not really. Now I do see this is somewhat disconcerting. If we look here, you can see that this leg is actually touching this leg. Well, now that I look at it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I saw this before I noticed they're on the same pad. They're on the same pad, so that doesn't matter at all. Disregard. Okay. They're on the exact they're on the same pad, so that's no big deal. Alright, well let's just get it all uh, put back together and hooked up and see what we get because I see no outward signs of anything that would cause color problems. This looks absolutely fine. So if we turn it on and we don't have color issues, I'm going to contribute it to the fact that our color pots were all the way down. Or if we turn it on and there's and we have no issues at all with color, power, screen size, if it works exactly as advertised, the way it's supposed to work. I say as advertised, I mean advertised from the factory, not advertised from how I, I got it. If it works as advertised of how the factory advertises it should work, meaning it works just fine, then we'll just kind of, uh, we'll do our cap kit and our reflow and give it a number of hours on the tube to test. And it may be an issue with the tube that's being used with this. So let's get it back together and see what we get. Uh, we'll plug in remote board. Oh, well, this could have something to do with it. Our connector is broken. Not too critical of an issue, but hmm, I don't think I did that. But it goes right back together like you'd, like you'd never know. So let's go ahead and just plug this back in. I don't think I did that. I'll have to go back and look at the footage. But we'll plug this back in. Okay, that is connected just fine. You can see there's no issue there, no worse for wear. And the and the pin, or the socket is on the pin, so that should be okay. Uh, let's see, what, what pin was that? That was our VB. Well, over here we have red, red green, and blue. Red, green, blue are over here. Red, green, blue are right here. And that was VB that was broken, but it's connected. I don't know if that's video B plus or what that is. I think that might be video B plus. Because that comes over off of, that comes over across this jumper right to this, which goes straight over to Test point two or three. So that's absolutely our video B plus. So that should be about 150 volts on there, give or take. So I think that's probably going to be okay. Um, so let's hook this back up. All right. Okay, that should do it. Let's uh, get it on the tube and. See what happens. Okay, just like that, we're ready to go. Uh, anode, neck, yoke, ground, video, power, remote are all hooked up. Have not turned it on yet, so let's go ahead and fire it up and see if it turns on and if we get our colors here. So one, two, three. Ooh. That does not sound normal. We got high voltage and it's running, but I have a nice high pitch whine. And Oh man, I think we might need a new flyback. That's making a very high-pitched noise. It's not normally made, but yeah, look at this. Let's do a vertical. Where's vertical size? Height. Here we go. And vertical hold. There we go. Uh, brightness, contrast. Oh, I got all the colors. Red, red, green, blue. Now that noise went away, the high-pitched noise, 
it just it went away. Hmm. So maybe the flyback isn't bad. That was just very odd. It had a very high pitch noise that's not normally associated with uh, what the noises this thing makes. So, but as you can see, no issues. And of course, the colors aren't set properly. Let's turn contrast down, brightness down, and fly back all the way up till we get. You won't get raster lines on this model, but you'll get. Um, oh, I need a screwdriver for this. Uh, where did you go, my lovely? Where did you go? I just had it. Where did that little bastard go? Well, I don't know where it went. I had it. Oh, it rolled over here. You cheeky monkey. All right, let's get that right there. Uh, the glue's still holding it on place here. There we go. Okay, so you'll see here that I can turn this up and you won't get raster lines. It just kind of washes out. So let's turn it down till it's a bit dark right about there. Then we'll do contrast. Oh, there's that noise again. You can hear it. You just heard it. Man. Uh, you know what? If I wiggle this around and that goes away, the flyback needs replaced. Oh yeah, you can hear it. I don't know if you can listen. Listen to it. Yep, I think that flyback needs replaced. Um, don't know if it came through on the camera, but I could hear it. It made every time I moved it, it would make a noise. So, uh, with that set aside, or that being what it is, um, I've got. Let's see, brightness needs to be roughly there. I've got all my colors, just like I thought. Oh man, that is crisp and beautiful. Look at that. Oh, I need a stagnant image here. There we go. That is nice. Look at that. After it's warmed up a bit, looking great. Uh, we have width control. Yes, we do. We have contrast brightness. We have vertical size. Yes, we do. Vertical position. Yes, we do. And vertical hole, we know that works. Yeah. Um, horizontal position. Yep. So everything's working. I mean, other than needing caps and possibly a new flyback. Uh, I'll do the cap kit and the full reflow first before I determine the flyback absolutely needs replaced. Uh, because after, if the reflow and the cap kit makes it stop doing what it was doing, because it stopped doing it again, uh, then we'll just determine that it's probably okay. Uh, there's no reason to change it if it's, I mean, it's working. It wasn't flickering when that noise was going off. It wasn't making any kind of weird lines. So there's no need to replace it unless we are absolutely 100% positive it's bad. But when you hear it making that high-pitched whine, and it, the whine will change when you push on it and move it, then usually it's on the way out. So I'll get with the owner and find out if he wants to change it or not. Uh, there's no reason to really show that. I've shown that before. But, just so you guys know, if you ever hear the, the flyback making a high-pitched noise or high-pitched whine and the, the tone changes or goes away or, or stops working, any of that stuff happens while you move it. And you can move it go, eh, 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 went, went, and the noise changes or goes away when you're, when you're moving on it or, or uh, wiggling it, then it usually means that it's on its way out. Easy for me to say, but you get the idea. But it's still running. Uh, we do have a little bit of ghosting here which may be caps but okay so let's now that we know that it's working fine and i don't see any actual issue with this let's do our full cap kit and our full reflow and then come back and see if it's any better well it looks great now but we'll see make sure it still works see if our ghosting is gone and make sure our flyback isn't making those terrible noises again it may be that it's been off for so long that it needs to kind of get its juices flowing again too because that's very common as well but uh, it's very odd that this is labeled no red, no blue. Uh, it could have been they were all the way turned down. Or it could be a bad tube that this person is using for this setup. But for me, I have all my colors just fine as I suspected and as our testing showed. Um, let's see if turning those pots completely down like they were causes that. Let's try blue all the way down. 
No, we still have blue. If I turn all these pots completely down, they're all the way down right now. And I still have all my colors. So it's absolutely not an issue of them being turned down. So I'll put them back at the 30% or so that I had them. And, yep, still looks good. Looks darn good. Nice and crisp, full screen, beautiful colors. It's great. As I suspected, well, not being able to find any outward signs of issues. So, yeah, let's do our full cap kit, full reflow, and do some final testing and call this an easy fix. Um, I don't have an answer. I think maybe they have a bad tube or they have a bad video connector or a bad PCB, any number of things, but if it's not broken on my end, I can't fix it. So let's do all this other work and we'll see how it looks at the back end of all that. So I wanted to just cut back in here real quick and say that I've been just letting this run for about 45 minutes now since what I just, you can still see there's ghosting here. I uh, let this run for about the past 45 minutes since cutting away there just a few moments ago. And the flyback in this entire time has not squealed again at all or made any noise in any way, shape, or form. So I think it just needed to work some kinks out after being off for a while uh, because it seems to be running just perfectly and we have not budged once one bit on brightness or focus or contrast or nothing. This still looks phenomenal. So I think the flyback's actually fine. So I, but I just wanted to point out that in, you know, if you come across other chassis where the flyback's making a bunch of weird noise and it changes if you wiggle it around, it's usually on its way out. But I think in all those instances, it would be constant. It, it, would, it was always there or never went away. This one, it went away. I think it just needed to work some kinks out. Um, but I, and I think it's gonna be just fine. So let's go ahead. It's been about 45 minutes and it's stone solid, rock solid. Nothing wrong with it. Uh, so I think what we'll do is I'll just turn this off and do all the work and come back and we'll show it afterward and we'll call this a quick easy fix here. So stand by one moment. Well, and just like that, the full rework has been done. New caps, full reflow, full inspection, repositioning of bent components, the whole nine yards, everything that I normally do to all these. So now it's time to test it. We are set up for our B plus. Oh, I forgot to turn the meter on. Uh, we're set up for B plus to read that. Then we'll read, assuming it's good, we'll read our shutdown pod. There's no way for me to adjust anything because both the pots are sealed tight. So hopefully we get around 117 and uh, 0 0.1 for our shutdown. 117 for, for B plus. I'm sorry, 117 for B plus, uh, 0 0.1 for our shutdown. And yeah, we're also looking to make sure the flyback doesn't make its high pitched noise anymore. Uh, like I've mentioned many times already. Um, if it makes the high-pitched noise, it's going to have to be replaced at some point. The problem is I, I don't have any on hand because the last time I tried to make an order for parts, I ordered some U2000s and some K7000s, but the 74-7500 flybacks were out of stock, and nobody seems to be, have them in stock anywhere. So I don't know when they're going to come in, but nobody seems to have them, so I, uh, I'm going to have to wait for a while. So, I mean, this one is working and is functioning, but it makes that high-pitched noise. But after five minutes or so, it goes away. So I think it's probably okay, but it needs to be replaced at some point in the future. So let's go ahead and turn this on, make sure we get our B+, make sure everything is working and good to go. And we're interested to see if I put anything in backwards, hopefully nothing blows up. I haven't turned it on yet. And we're interested to see if the flyback makes the noise here. So let's find out. Uh, one, two, three. Oh, came right on. And hey, look at that. Uh, 118. Uh-oh. Mm. I kind of heard it trying to make the noise. It's, it's quiet now, but it wasn't a moment ago. 118.3, uh, that's good. And hey, look, we got our image. Uh, so nothing's in backwards, nothing's exploded. Let's go ahead and plug in. We have good B+. Let's plug in our uh, shutdown. Focus up here, focus up. Uh, right there, so that little test point right there. We want to hook to that, and we want 0 0.1 on our meter, and oh my lord, look at that. Look at that, 0 0.1, perfect. So our B plus is good, our shutdown pod is adjusted properly, so that's all working correctly. Um, yeah, that's awesome. So now we just need to let it run, and it's looking good. That flyback though, it's not making the noise now. It was making that noise earlier. Now it's not. Uh, well, maybe it has to sit for a while. Maybe it needs to warm up. I can't say. 
But it's working right now. So maybe the cap kit did something, maybe the reflow did something. Uh, it's hard to say. But uh, since it's not making that noise now, I'm going to consider it okay for the time being. At some point it'll have to be replaced because it was making that noise. I, it's hard to say with this kind of stuff, but if this was my personal chassis, I would replace it. However, like I say, I don't have access to any of the flybacks because they're all sold out everywhere. So, But for the time being, this is perfectly fine. It is working perfectly, and I would say it's okay, and at some point it would need to be replaced. But anyway, yeah, it's working great. So we'll consider this repaired. I'll let it run for two, three, hour, four hours. Make sure nothing happens. Make sure nothing goes haywire. Make sure the flyback doesn't start making the high-pitched noise again. And we'll call it good. So another quick, easy repair here. So thanks for watching. Um, and I have uh, two more in the queue for this particular person. So we'll knock out those next. Another 7,000 and another 7,400. We'll see how those go, hopefully as well as this, or as easy as this. And we'll see. So stay tuned. Thanks again, and we'll see you then. So no sooner did I turn the camera off that the flyback began making that high-pitched noise again. You can hear it. And yeah, it, it, it's just bothersome to me because I don't like to, I don't want to send this back to the owner with, with this problem because, you know, it needs to be repaired, but I can't change it because there aren't any in stock. I don't know. Oh, see, it just went away. See, they just went away again. <laughs> I can somewhat make it partially come back by moving stuff. I don't know if you can hear that. Hmm. Well, it's just odd. So yeah, I, 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 hate, sending, I hate sending this back to the owner in this condition, but I don't have any to replace it with, and there aren't any to get. So, I'll let it run for three, four hours. Maybe it just needs to warm up for half an hour or so and be fine. Um, it's tough to say, but I'll let it run. We're going to go ahead and still consider this repaired, uh, but, but it needs a new flyback. So, uh, there's nothing really much to say about that. So, I'll just, we'll consider it fixed and move on. Just wanted to add that, yeah, I did start doing it again, and no sooner did I turn the camera on and start recording that it went away again. So, very odd. Um, anyway... So yeah, thanks again, and stay tuned for the next repairs. Well, I'm back again, sorry. I just, I, I was not happy with sending this back to the owner with that high pitch noise and a possible bad flyback. So if you go back a couple of videos, you'll see that I had a K7400 that was a super, super low hour 7400 that had no burn on any of the neckboard transistors, no neckboard burn. It was just a super low hour 7400. So I stole the flyback off of that chassis and put it in this one and you can hear that this thing is super quiet all the normal noises it's absolutely super super quiet no high-pitched noises no abnormal audio no no abnormal sounds and it works and looks beautiful so I am going to trash that other flyback that was in here and give this back to the owner with this working flyback and I'll just have him reimburse me for the cost of a new flyback and then I'll just replace the one that this came from later because it came from my personal stash that one that I fixed a couple of videos ago is from my personal stash so I'll just have him reimburse me for a new flyback and I'll use that to replace on the one I stole this one from because for all intents and purposes this is basically brand new anyway so I think that'll work just fine and it's running great it's been running for, I don't know, an hour now without issue. I've been waiting for it to warm up. And when I first turned it on after putting this in, nice and quiet, no high-pitched noises, and it's been that way ever since for the last hour. And the image looks fantastic and perfect. So I think now I'm, I'm confident in saying that it's done and, and working great, and now I'll, I'm confident sending it back to the owner. So now we're completely finished. Thanks again for watching. Sorry about all the endings and cutaways and, and but coming back but i wasn't confident and now i am so um we'll move on to the final two for this person and we'll call this one now officially done